Hey YouTube, making a follow-up video on my Atlantac Glock 17. This has Atlantac Razorback Glock Gen 4 slide, the Atlantac 9. This is a threaded fluted match grade bill. This is in the bronze finish, but kind of looks more gold to me. Um, I have a couple problems with the slide and I wanted to address it. Uh, there's not many videos, in fact, there's I remember when I bought this slide, there was zero videos on this product. That's why I made my initial unboxing video, which wasn't the greatest. Hopefully this one's going to be better. Um, so let's get into it. The slide. I've had this for about three years. Put about 600 rounds to the gun, uh, which is not that much, all things considered. Um, but yeah, that's where we are. So first issue we have with the slide is if you notice, do you notice all the slide wear on the side? The accelerated amount of slide wear. It's not focusing very well, but there's pretty noticeable slide wear on both sides. My camera doesn't like focusing. I'm on my iPhone. Um, but there's a lot of slide wear on this gun. And is from the holster. This is a Safari Land 6354DO. This one's with Glock 34 with a weapon light. I bought this whole six just for this red dot gun. I don't have this is my only RDS handgun and I bought it just for this. Now notice what happens when I go to holster. Oh hit my red dot. You hear that? That is a, that is the slides, the side of the serrations on the side of the slide, I guess angled on the sides. That's rubbing on the ALS mechanism inside my safari uh, To the point where it's actually, you can't tell because the light's not the greatest in there, but the ALS inside's all chewed up now. And this is a really expensive holster as well. Uh, in fact, it's very hard. There's a lot of resistance holding the gun, taking it out, and notice how the ALS is not even working. I'm gonna push down on the holster. Okay, it locked, but not locked. See, I didn't lock and I pushed on it pretty hard. Locked that time, but I shouldn't have to put the gun in and then push down like that to make the ALS lock. And then, even then, the ALS is hardly engaged. Here's a 17, same thing, Glock 17 Gen 4. This has the same weapon light. Goes in no resistant, clicks in very well, releases without, releases like butter, like it was made for this. Very nice fit. Clicks in, you hear that? That's how it should fit, but it doesn't. It's pretty annoying to have a really expensive holster you bought for the gun not work because I don't know if the slide is too big. I don't think it is. Maybe they're having the serrations on the side like that um, is causing it to drag on the ALS, causing it not to function very well. So that's really annoying. Um, besides that though, that's the only big issue I have with the slide. It's been fine. Uh, since that, I haven't had any glaring issues. I have two issues with the barrel. First one is barrel lockup. So, Lantac 9 barrel. Can you hear that? That's the play in the barrel. Now this is a match grade barrel. So, a quick test to do is if you just press down on the barrel when it's locked up, that's just testing barrel lockup. And if I do it this way, you can see maybe like a half millimeter, quarter millimeter of play up and down. That amount of play does not give you good accuracy or potential with a handgun. Now obviously, it doesn't really matter because I think in my opinion match grade barrels for pistols are very gimmicky because it's not going to make you more accurate. Um, you know, if I put this gun in a vise and lock it down, take all the human factors out, I could probably shoot a two-inch group at 100 yards. And if I buy, let's say, a match grade bale, 
Could I theoretically reduce the group to a, a 1.5 inch? Maybe, possibly, might, maybe the mechanical accuracy is slightly reduced with a, with a match grade barrel. In this case, it's not because it's bad lockup, but it doesn't matter. No one is gonna be able to shoot a one inch, one and a half inch group at 100 yards with a pistol because as soon as you add the human factor, it just, that's it. So, mass grade barrels are gimmicky. I had no intention that this was actually gonna improve my accuracy, and it doesn't, but the barrel lockup is very bad. And let's go back to my Glock 17 Gen 4. Same exact thing. I'm pressing down pretty hard. And you can very slightly hear it. Now, this is with no magazine. There's nothing blocking it. You can very slightly hear the barrel lockup move up and down. If you look from the side, this is me pressing pretty good. It basically is not moving. So, to lock up on a factory Glock, slide and barrel is tighter than a Lantac combination of the slide and barrel. So, another issue I have with the barrel. So, let's disassemble it. I'll take off the threaded portion of the cap. There's a accelerated amount of wear. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. That's pretty good. Right there, on the bottom of the barrel. Swapping down, right there again. I think there's some portions on the top as well, if I could find it. Right there, can you see it? This looks like some chipping right there. It's kind of out of focus. It doesn't, my camera, my iPhone doesn't like to focus close in. But there's a significant amount of finish wear, uh, which is kind of worrisome considering that this only has about 600 rounds through it. Um, it's not very high. Um, do you think with such a high end match grade barrel? that they would, all the features, like the quality of the finish would be super nice. Um, but that's an issue I have, is the quality of the finish. While we have it at the slide, you can see where the barrel locks up. Good amount of wear. I keep this pretty generously lubed and still weighing in, but I'm not too concerned about it. Um, it's supposed to do stuff like that. Nothing else alarming. Here's a dot if I haven't already shown you. Um, if I had to give this Lantac Bell and Lantac Bell and Lantac Slide a review, out of five stars, I'd give it a three. Um, I'd say it's a fair. I remember when I mounted my red dot, it's very tight. I didn't even have to have, have the screws, and then I can tell it wasn't going anywhere. The red dot lockup was very tight. Um, but the holster wear from a high quality holster really irks me. Um, the price, as we haven't talked about that yet. This Lantac slide I bought from Midway USA, the retail price was 820 bucks. I qualify for blue label Glocks, so I could buy two complete Glock 17s for example, and that would be the same price as just this completed slide. By completed, I mean it doesn't come with a bill and doesn't come with a recoil spring. 820 bucks. That's pretty ludicrous for a retail price. Um, I guess custom red dot Glock slide and custom Glock are just expensive in general. So I can't fathom spending, let's say, $3,000 on a sailing of arms or an agency of arms, but that's just what they charge. Um, Lantac charges $800 for this completed slide, which also came by the fact, by the way, with regular height night sights, the GL01. Um, as soon as I got those sights, I took them off and put suppressor height sights. These are also trigger cons, but why they would put regular regular height sights is beyond me. Maybe that's the reason why it's on clearance, because they realized it was a bad idea. 
It came with a fluted striker with a lightened spring. And within the week I got this slide, I took that out and put an OEM Glock striker assembly in here. Um, everything, all the internals on this gun are stock Glock. My reasoning is it gives you the OEM reliability. Glocks are known to be reliable. As soon as you start adding lightened springs and fluted whatever and disconnectors, whatever you do, as soon as you start fucking with the internals, that's when you start getting you're losing your reliability and it's in a lot of ways. Um, like if you reduce your striker spring enough, you can make your gun not drop safe anymore. Or it's something like that, some sort of internal part. Um, so I keep everything, all the internals in here, all the internals in here are Glock factory. And that's what I recommend. Um, I guess if you're still here, I'm, I'll go on the Glock the reasons why I built this. Um, let me put this back together. So I bought this package about three years ago. I wanted to build a Red Dot Glock 17 and I wanted to be tricked out. I wanted to, it be a Gucci Glock. At the time, there were a few options. I could buy a custom slide, which I did. I bought the Lantex slide, but the adult at the time, the only only other company making a custom slide was Zev. Bell now was making the Gen 3 slides for the Glocks, but they did not have the Gen 4, so it was not an option for me. So it was either Zev or Lantac. Um, Zev, I hear pretty good things about their big maker in slides. But like I said before, I got the slide on sale, actually on clearance for Midway. So that's the reason why I pulled the trigger on this. Uh, the two other ways you can build a custom red dot is you can send off a Glock slide to get milled, send it off to Agency Arms or uh, whatever company that does slide milling and have them mount a red dot. Um, or you can get the Glock MOS, that's your three options. And I ended up just buying Glock slide, the MOS system is probably cheapest and doesn't, it's probably, it'll, it'll work, you know, the Glock MOS will work so that's also a pretty good option. Or if you already have a custom slide, uh, if you already have an OEM slide, you can always have it, send it off to get milled. So it's up to you what you want to do. Um, one thing, if I could do it all over again, what I would do is I would get irons forward. So it's my understanding that there's no custom, um, I, I say custom, but any manufacturer that makes a slide that has irons forward. Lantac, Zeb, Brownells, they all make the slides, they make the irons rear of the optic. I really wish they would have made the rear side forward of the optic, and there's three reasons for that. First off is for side alignment. You know, when you are finding your dot, you can just align the iron sights, and you can align that dot. Um, another reason is you have a very cluttered sight picture when you have irons rear. The suppressor sights covers about half of the sight picture with an OMR. I shoot with both eyes open, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I say it definitely would be an upgrade to have a clear, less cluttered sight picture, and you'll get that with irons forward. The last reason is it serves as a shell deflector. Sometimes you have shells eject straight back hit the lens of your arm more. Eventually, once you get high round counts, you're gonna have to replace your red dot from the sole fact that your shells are bouncing off and hitting it. Um, Sage Dynamics did a video on that, and he said, I can't remember exactly, but let's say 20,000 rounds, he had to replace his arm more. Um, when he has a Heinz forward of that, he doesn't have to do it. So, Land Tag, if you're watching, um, if you ever made a custom Glock slide with irons forward, that probably would re justify your retail price. Um, I'm not aware of any slide manufacturer that has irons forward. The only way I'm aware you can get it is if you send it off to get milled from Agency Arms. So that's my Glock Land Tech Razorback review. Review of the slide and bill. I give it a three out of five stars for the reasons I said. 
I'm not crazy about it, but I'm not drop dead hitting it. So, thanks for watching. I know it's been a long video, just me rambling for the last five minutes, and maybe me just giving my opinion. So, appreciate it, guys. Take it easy.